guys, welcome back, it's Biggs. Now, today on today's video, I'm gonna be talking about something a little bit different. It's something that uh, over the years, for the better part of 20 or 30 years, people have asked me some of the questions about some of the fish rooms I've had before in the past for myself, some of the fish rooms I've helped uh, people work with or engineer and get some of the systems in place for them as well. But one of the things that always came back to the forefront that people always asked about was my automatic water changing systems that I used over the years. Now, my last fish room prior to, to moving here out in the country uh, was about 4,000 gallons. I had a 750 gallon aquarium that was, I think it was 21 years old before we tore it apart. And, um, and then a myriad of other sizes of tanks and stuff. And the automatic wire changer, I think is absolutely integral for the reason that I was so successful with doing a lot of different stuff. Now, I was also, we had very, very good water in the city of Winnipeg has very, very exceptionally good water and stuff like that. Uh, so it's, if you're a generalist, it worked really, really well. And if you wanted to specialize in anything, well, then I also produced about 180 gallons of uh, reverse osmosis water, known as RO water, on a daily basis. And I always had that available with a pressurized pump that uh, with a flick of a switch, I could use that for water changes. And that was integral for me being able to breed certain species like uh, Haplarchus siticus, and uh, some of those different uh, pike cichlids and things like that, some of the different South American stuff that needed that really reduced hardness and softer water, the rainwater type aspect and stuff, some of the different kerosens. And that was really, really lots of fun. Now, when I moved out here, out to the new place, I knew that I wanted to eventually get back to that, but I went through several different phases. Uh, we had a baby shortly after moving in, and uh, that uh, took a bit more priority than a fish room. We also went from a small city property to five acres out in the country and city people, no matter what anybody says, when you, when you take somebody who's lived in the city their entire life and they move out to the country, uh, we have no idea what we're doing. We're just winging it and uh, we've got all sorts of livestock and animal which you guys have seen in some of the videos and stuff. And it's just so much more work. We love it. It's enjoyable work, but it's a lot more work and stuff. And, it is what it is. So the fish room is going to take a bit on the back burner. But when I started setting up again, I, I, I first started setting up because I basically told myself I did not want to go into cichlids. That was the easy thing for me to go back into. It's kind of where I was when I left off. And I kind of forced myself, nope, you're not going to go down that route. We want nice decorated tanks and stuff. I mean, you can do that with cichlids just as easy as any other fish. But at the time when I was doing I was all my tanks I referred to as rocks and pots. And I did not want to go that route again of rocks and pots. I wanted nice planted tanks. I wanted a lot of that stuff that kind of got me into the hobby at a very, very young age. I wanted some of that stuff, that inspirational stuff again. I wanted to kind of reinvent myself again. And the YouTube has definitely been a factor in doing that. But uh, the first foray that I got when I actually really, really decided that I want to get back into it, what I was going to do, is I decided to go the killy route. Killyfish. Yeah, that's not work at all, really. No, let's, let's get five times, ten times the amount of tanks that we intended, all smaller ones, so they're easier to work with, but uh, let's make it labor-intensive, live food feeding. Oh, yeah, this was a great idea. It lasted about a year. I acquired a lot of species. There was just so many, so many people out there that were just so instrumental in, in feeding my addiction for killies, and I'd be traveling to shows, and I'd be ordering fish and eggs online, and they'd be showing up at the shows, and I'd just bring them back, and it was absolute chaos. And I loved it, and I had a lot of fun, and I was able to take in my local area and get about three or four hardcore people really into killies really, really quick, because I'd often bring back so many species and just hear, you take those, and you take those, and we'll get some, and we'll share them around down the road. So that, for that factor, it was worth it, totally. But what I soon realized with my traveling schedule is it ended up being the massive amount of the workload all fell onto my beautiful wife, and that really was not fair to her. She never once complained about my fish, ever. And yet this woman was coming down and she was doing live food and frozen food and each tank had little color coordinated dots which coincided to something else that she knew about and stuff and one day i came home and like I, every time i'd be home every week usually on average uh, i would do all the water changes for all the tanks in about an hour so i figured you know i'm doing all the work no all the work was the daily feedings and the tending and looking for eggs and, and moving the mops and doing all that stuff so the bottom line of my heart i can't thank my wife enough for tolerating that for almost a year but uh, she never once complained and I love her dearly I still do I, <laughs> I never stopped <laughs> but uh, she she put in all that time and effort for it and now for my fish room it's a lot easier for uh, she comes down every second or third day and feeds the fish and she brings the baby down and the baby's now three and they enjoy watching the fish and stuff like that so 
now it's it's back to where it needs to be and it's not all cichlids i've got all sorts of different stuff that's percolating in the different tanks and i play with them for a little while then we change them up for you guys on youtube but getting back to the su subject at hand is this automatic water changing system i've seen lots of automatic water changing systems uh, uh josh cunningham uh in uh, near michigan he's got a an absolutely breathtaking fish room with many 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 tanks he specializes in really really high quality Rift Lake African cichlids and uh, I watched some stuff he's been put out he just put together this absolutely stunning amazing manifold uh, automatic water change system and I'm sure it's gonna work absolutely amazing for him but when I just look at the the amount of time and effort put into something like that in, to me because I'm very much a kiss principle type guy and if you don't know what that means, it means keep it simple, stupid. So that's me. Uh, Biggs is a little bit simple, so we got to keep it simple just for Biggs. So I would never be able to go that route that Josh went. I'm sure it works absolutely breathtaking and amazing. And just I would just like to go in his fish room, just stare at the pipes and all that stuff, and it just it's wonderful. But uh, to me, I like to do things a little bit simpler, a little bit easier. And I have in this system, I've been using it for on and off for 30 plus years. And basically today, I'm sitting here with the one of the 160s so the 160 here and the one above these two 160 gallon tanks they're on automatic uh, water changer system using the straight pressurized well water so the water comes out of the ground like 52 degrees it's really really cold in the winter time it's going to be even worse but uh, i don't i don't treat the water at all for the the new world uh, you can see all the the, the, the the nice live bears behind me the wild live bears and, uh, and uh, the nice cichlids and stuff like that. But all Central American stuff, they take all the real, real hard, hard water. So coming out of my well out of the ground, that's really, really good. The only concern I have would be uh, the iron concentrations that comes out of groundwater when you're using a well system, which is something that's new to me. But uh, hasn't stopped uh, some of the fish. The, the pair of Honda and Red Point Convict, I believe they're a hybrid, the, the pair that's in, the, in this tank behind me, they've been spawning regularly. I'm not saying that's a good, you know, good indicator, but you know, they're not having any issues. The live bears are having no issues. The pair of Bulleri are still young up ahead there up top, and the pair of uh, Amanatitlania Myrnae up top, they haven't spawned yet either, and they should have spawned the same type of rate as these guys. So maybe the iron's affecting them, don't know, but that's something down the road that we could easily just put a, 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 a cartridge filter system in place that would take care of the iron. Or more than likely what I'd probably do is I'd probably go and end up uh, changing my water softener system and putting a whole house iron system in place, and then everything's good for the whole house. But that's a, like a 35 to 4K bill, so that's not something we're going to rush into right away. I still do RO water for all the planted tanks, the shrimp tanks, all that sort of stuff. So I still got RO water available to me whenever I want. So today I'm going to give you some real rundown, some basics and how quickly and easy you can put together a nice and simple water changer uh, for your home. These tanks here, are not uh, they are drilled, but they're drilled in, in the backs of the, the overflows. Uh, and then they have the rain type chamber. So I have no need for sumps like a lot of people usually use with, uh, with these types of things. They have a big sump underneath. The tank uh, is basically the sump itself, and I just pump up into, into the rain chamber and stuff, and I can show you guys that on the video, and it works for me. I'm very much an old school guy, and I'm very much an old school aquatic type guy. In the 80s, when those Dupla Bio Balls came out, that revolutionized everything for me, the way I was keeping fish, getting that 100% oxygen saturation into the water column, dealing with fast water fish. And like it, it just opened up doors for me that had never been opened before. And uh, I honestly, no matter what I do down the road, I see all this new stuff that comes out all the time. I'm never going to deviate from, from uh, using, using the bio ball type system and stuff like that. There's lots of other medias I can use in there work exactly the same way. Uh, the mat and filter I could put in there, uh, ring gutter guard rolled up. There are all sorts of stuff I can put in there that work on the same sort of principle and stuff like that. But stuff we can talk about one day down the road and stuff. We'll talk about bio media a little bit different. But today's topic is automatic water changers, DIY. All right, now my, D my DIY water changers, my automatic water changers, they're pretty simple, they're pretty straightforward, and they, they can work for many applications. My old fish room, as you guys know, has had, uh, had almost 4,000 gallons of water. It had the big 750 gallon tank. Now it had its own dedicated water changer just because it was out of simplicity. But using the system that I've used, it doesn't matter how many valves you put on it. If you wanna have 60 tanks, 100 tanks, it's no problem. You can do it. You just by adding valves. Just you have to uh, adjust each individual valve. Now, back in the day, 
we used to have to use before uh, before PEX came along, before PEX hose came along, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Before that came along, we used to have to use copper pipe. Now, copper pipe was uh, it would take it was, you'd spend the entire day soldering, making you know buying the pipe, cutting it, making the T's, making the little sections, putting a needle valve in, and putting an automatic shutoff valve so you could control each individual tank. And I used to have, and I've been looking for it because I thought I still had my original old school manifold. Had about a dozen uh, valves and everything on it. It was four feet long, and basically it's it's where this has been cut off of. And I couldn't find it in the garage anymore, so I apologize. I wish I still had that as an example, but you'll see when I show you the pecs, this is way easier. It's like night and day easier. And this entire project could be done probably in, in, within an hour. And the, the, the fish room as it stands right now, it's still a, fair, a working fish room. It's much smaller than any of the fish rooms I've ever had before. And I have different challenges I've mentioned before that living out in the country, I have well water, which comes out of the ground, 52 degrees. Uh, there's no chlorine to it whatsoever. However, the water is extremely hard. And the only thing that I'm dealing with right now, and I'll have to evaluate over time, is the ion concentration in the water as to whether or not it's going to be affecting the fish in these two systems. So these are the two 160s. This is the bottom one and this is the top one and stuff. And they're primarily wild caught or wild strain live bears. Some I brought back from Florida on the last trip that we caught wild in Florida. And some down here were uh, graciously given to me by a, a wonderful member of the Aquarium Society of Winnipeg known as David Glaster. Wonderful, wonderful old school aquarist. And uh, I've had uh, some, some Jim Cummings tuba in here, some irregular. There's a pair of um, Honduran red points, but we believe they're a hybrid based on the size of the spawn. And they were generously given to me when I was setting the tank up. And up here we also have that beautiful pair of uh, Amanitlania Myrne from my good buddy Ray Quinnell. Now, the Myrne have not spawned. The live bears have been prolific. The live bears are prolific. The 100 red points have been prolific. And everything else is growing up. And I forgot there's a, I still have some, uh, some buller eye up here uh, as a gift from uh, Dan Sharifi over at Cichlids of the Americas when I was there visiting him. And they're growing up in there as well. And this type of media, now I could put other types of media in the rain chamber itself. And that's what I call it. Instead of a biochamber, I call it a rain chamber. And the reason being is that the media, the water splashes through the media and then basically just rains down in the tank. Now when these tanks are lit with, uh, with nice light, real nice, nice lighting, like a good quality high-end LED, it's LEDs right now as well, but not fancy, fancy LEDs you get that nice dappling kind of effect on the on the substrate and stuff like that. It makes it look like the, the, you're walking on the beach in, the, you know, in high noon in, the, in Brazil. You get that beautiful sun, sunset strikes all over the sun, all over the substrate. Absolutely love that. And I had the same sort of effect when I had my big 750 because I was using big mercury vapor uh, discharge lights and they were actually uh, old school uh, uh, retired uh, street lights. And I modified them and stuff like that and took the ballasts, took the ballast underneath the tanks mounted them to the base of the tank and they actually became the the basis for the heating system for the tanks but we're going to talk about uh, heating large tanks down the road because we got a couple of other ideas i don't know if you know a good friend of mine down in ohio mr jonathan straczynski known as the fish guy uh he, he he's done some crazy stuff over the years he's got a wonderful wonderful big big tank and it's back up and running it looks as cool as ever and stuff but this guy's a tinkerer, just like me, and uh, he, 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 has a, he has probably, without a doubt, the coolest idea for heating big, big aquariums. So I'm going to be down in Cleveland there, as you guys know. I'm going to be speaking at the, the OCA Extravaganza this year, 2019. Uh, that's in November. It's the week before American Thanksgiving. It's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually added to a palette of some absolutely legendary speakers, and I'm beyond honored. I think I'm going to be basically the, 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 the jester for the weekend. I'm being brought in to be more of an entertainer. So we're going to have some fun there. But hopefully while I'm there, I'm going to be able to spend some time with my brother, uh, Jonathan Straczynski, and maybe do an interview and really guys showcase some of the ideas and things that he's put forward that are behind the scenes of running a big, big aquarium. Because that's where the challenges come in. Now, when I talk about running on big, big tanks and stuff like that, which is really the reason that these things come about for me, because when you're keeping a large aquarium, you can't do the traditional water changes. When you got a 70 gallon aquarium, you can go and do your gravel cleaning, do your maintenance on your filter, run your hose from your sink or whatever, and you could fill that tank up no problem. But when you got a 750 gallon aquarium, I'm sorry, your 33 gallon hot water tank 
is not going to be able to handle refilling that tank if you're going to do a 30 or 40 or 50 percent water change. You will literally spend the entire day trying to get that tank filled again. So to alleviate that, we do small, small scale water changes. And the water change unit on this one went to small valves and I was using a quarter inch diameter rigid air line, a rigid hose, which would normally use for reverse osmosis units. And each one of those would go to a tank, and then each one of those would be controlled, needle valved, dialed down to exactly what volume I wanted to do water change on each individual tank. Because in my old fish room, I didn't have one tank. I had many tanks, and many tanks of many different sizes. So each tank couldn't get the same volume of water change every single time. And then I'd put it onto a timing system and stuff, and the timing system would come once a day, twice a day, depending on what I needed per tanks. And that's one of the reasons that I took the 750 off the main system and put it on a standalone one on its own, because it really only cost me an additional valve, and that's not expensive, we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, to set that other one up, it was just another piece of hose and another single valve, one shut off valve, and that tank was running. But that big tank, because it was so big, I ran it full open, the unit full open, no on and off valves whatsoever, full open, and I did it for half an hour, twice a day. And what I basically did is I think I got a 5% water change every single day on that big tank. Now, any long-term requires, no, smaller, more regular water changes, or smaller scale, more regular water changes are always better than one big. So if you go once a week and do 50% water change, now take that 50% and divide it by seven days and break it down to one, one seventh of what a 50% water change is and do that every single day. Even though you're doing exactly the same amount of water, your fish will be better for it, your, your spawns, the health of the environment, the tank, everything will be better. Your maintenance will be easier if you do smaller, more frequent water changes. And that's where these automatic wire changers come in. They're not designed to replace your day-to-day. -day. They're not designed to replace you going in and actually doing a hardcore maintenance. They're basically just designed to be able to give you a bit better water quality available and usually for more people with large-scale tanks, large fish rooms, more and more and more and more. It just makes your life a lot easier. Now, with automation, people like me, who's kind of simple, with when you start adding a lot of automation, most people, when they add a lot of automation quickly, is they don't put those fail safes in place. That when something does and eventually will fail, how do you handle dealing with that? I keep, this light keeps, for some reason, keeps flickering and failing or something like that. It keeps looking like a lightning storm going on behind me. So I'm just going to continue on with the video and we're just going to turn that light off. And maybe we'll, uh, we'll look at that lighting fixture in another video down the road. Don't really know. But regardless, we'll keep going. Now we were talking about the big tanks, why we do it and stuff like that. But really, it's just to give you the guys that better water quality and ease and give you some free up some time that you can actually sit back and watch your fish, enjoy your fish, see the behaviors, watch breeding, watch pairing, watch interactions, spend that time feeding the fish, put a chair, put a couch, put something in that room, because that's, that's why you guys do it. You do it for the relaxation and the enjoyment and just, just watching it and observing it. So hopefully that'll work for you. Next step we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna show you how we go about building one. So basically the unit, to give you a quick rundown of what it is, this is the, the old unit that was running on my big tank. And I'll show you some pictures uh, that I've taken off Amazon and stuff like that. But this one here is a water master, rain guard, doesn't matter. But basically, you can go to any one of your building supply stores, go into the plumbing department, and say that you want a lawn sprinkler solenoid valve. That's basically what this is. You can order them off Amazon, you can order them off anywhere. They're usually, you can get a male, to male female, doesn't really matter. You need the connectors. There's, they're very, very clearly marked where they have an arrow right on them that says one, it's, they're all unidirectional, so water goes in one way and then water goes up. And basically, this is just a small electromagnetic valve that controls it. It does have an on and off shut off switch to, to bypass that if I should watch it. But I always put a manual shut off. That way, full water mains pressure is coming from here. Either I've tapped it into a line somewhere in the line using PEX and using some sort of connector attached, and you're building hardware, your guy in your, in, your, in your plumbing department can help you with all this. I'm gonna show you some of the different fittings, and I'm gonna actually show you how quick and easy it is to put the things to get fittings together on these stuff using PEX nowadays. And then this one here, this line coming out of it, 
comes out, you get whatever fittings you need. And this is just a compression fitting I can pop in and off with a, with a screwdriver if I want to. It's easy and easy to replace. All easy, cheap. This is like a $25 part. And there, this is like an $8, five, eight dollar part, depending on where you are in North America. And then after that, I put individual valves. And I'll show you that on the one that's operational that we've already built. And a couple of valves in line and one valve per tank and one valve per tank. And that's what it does. So when it comes on, each water runs through. When power and current come to this unit here, we'll show you what to do next. Okay? Now, Pexos comes in a lot of different diameters. You work with whatever works for you. I always buy it by the big roll like you see here. You know, it's easy to work with. These are just uh, pipe cutters. Uh, they're just uh, basically a giant pair of scissors. It's nothing fancy to them at all. This is Pexos. Easy, easy to work with, okay? Now, when you're going to use Pexos, you're going to need different fittings. Now, maybe I don't need a union fitting like this from this project, but I just want to use this to show you guys how quick and easy it is to put together, okay? Then you need the, the, the little collars. This little collar is the type of collar that is designed for these pliers, okay? I take the collar, I put it in line on the collar, You'll see the collar has a, a, a little head to it, okay? That little head there. The pliers are going to come and grab this little portion of the head, and they're going to squeeze it, and it's going to make it real tight. So I'm going to take here, take the pliers. Pliers are on that. I'm going to put it down here a little bit just so I can get it started. All right, and then once I can grab the other end. Okay, now you guys can see, okay? nice and tight and then we just do this these come off and as you can tell see how it's pinched and crimped this thing is tight sometimes these things will still spin in there but it doesn't matter they still work trust me the first time i worked with pecs i had all these loose fittings and stuff and i was i'm super uncomfortable about hiding this inside a drywalled wall or gyp rock wall and then finishing the whole thing off but Honestly, I have never, ever, in almost 15, 20 years, had a single piece or connection of PEX ever leak on me. So, like, it's so easy. So you get an idea. I could literally do another one, another one, another one, another one, and that would be my valves. And each single valve would be ready to go after that. And then all I got to do at the end is you buy a brass end piece or something that, that's solid, and you tap it off. And I'll show you the one on the one that's operational. And that way, at any point in time, if you needed to, you can just come in line, bring your snips in place, cut another piece off, add another valve. You can go and you can do this in any shape or form you want. If you've only got a small space and you want to make a little special jigsaw puzzled shape to fit in that space of the wall, doesn't matter. You just want to have access to be able to access each one of those valves. Usually once they're set up, for each individual tank and you, you're happy with the calibration that you've done, usually you just leave them alone. But every once in a while, like if, like in my case where I move stuff around and I do stuff and I change tanks up for you and maybe the 75s behind you are going to come out and I'm going to put an 8-foot tank there, well then I have to be able to shut the system down, turn the system off. So having a complete shutoff valve for the whole thing is a nice plus. So next we'll show you what they actually look like for the final results and how it'll work. Okay. Now I'm on the other side of my fish room here. This is this is actually my laundry room, service room, and stuff like that. I got the RO units, the 180 gallon reservoir, my beer fridge, you know, and stuff like that. But basically, this is the the, the automatic wire changes that we quickly put together there. And it's only at this point in time because uh, I'm doing plant tanks, shrimp tanks, different things. The only thing that this tank is running right now, the only two things that's going to run on the automatic system is basically the two 160s, and they can take the nice hard water that comes out of my well. So. Here's the valve itself, that lawn sprinkler solenoid. You can see here, it's got the shut off here. And then this is the, the, the actual magnetic valve itself. And that magnetic valve is just barretted and it's basically set to a step down transformer that is uh, it low, makes it low voltage. And I'll show you a picture of that. Uh, the reason for that by wiring to a small st stand, uh, step down transformer is it makes it completely non-lethal. The fact that you guys are taking the electronics and electrical equipment and stuff, you're gonna be working with it in water you might want to take that after a safety precaution and you know, step it down to make it low voltage so it's, no, it's completely safe for you. You're, you're worth more than your fish. Okay? 
Now I have the valve is turned off right now. There's a reason for that is because it's not completely finished right now, but the valve is turned off right now. But this line goes all the way directly up here. Uh, you can see it up there and that's basically it's tapped into that white line there and that line there is my cold water 52 degrees that comes in out of my well service and it coming straight out of the well that one does not go through the water softener whatsoever so that water is perfectly good goes straight through comes to the water changer unit and and then it goes to the individual valves so here's some of the individual valves you saw I was telling you there's a crimping there's a crimping there's all the crimps and then there's a little brass valve at the very, very end. That's just a cap at the end. And I just built it to fit this little space and I just did it quickly. So it's not designed to be pretty. This back room is a utility room, fish uh, laundry room, that sort of stuff. And there's nothing pretty back here. I make the other room look a little bit more prettier and stuff like that because I'm doing all the filming, the videos and the different angles and everything like that for you guys and stuff. But back here, I'm not worried about pretty. I'm just, I just, I'm just not. Now you notice each one of these, the first two are shut off because they're ready in the vent that I want to add two more tanks on the line. As I mentioned you guys in a different video earlier that I'm looking at adding a, an eight foot tank in place of the 275s. And if I go and do Central American or New World there, I'll probably want the nice hard water. So again, then I'll run the water and that means it's all ready to go and go offline with this one here. And there's the nice rigid uh, hoses running off each one of these tanks. And they're going to each of the, the 160s. And then the valves are set at about three quarters. Now when I want to turn this unit on, normally this unit would be set up fully on the timer. The timer is ready to go and I've got the timer set up as a fail safe that it's set up just to run for basically a brief period of time and it's going to run once a day and then the timer. But the timer right now is not plugged in and that's just because I haven't quite 100% finished it. So for me to do an automatic water change, it's, let's call it semi-automatic right now, it's basically just by me doing this right now here in the tank. Now there's the rigid hose that's come through the wall or the roof or whatever you want to call it and it's just got a couple of little clips there holding it to some 2x4s. comes into the rain chambers of the biofilters and it comes into the tanks right here and it splishes and splashes and does everything great. Here's the other one running on the other tank down here and it adds straight unchlorinated 52 degree water into these tanks. Now some people think fish, oh they can't handle that temperature, they can't handle it. Well if you guys saw the video about the 160s before they can handle a lot more than we ever think they can. So adding a little bit of fresh water into these systems is beneficial. Now these 160 gallon tanks are a little bit different in design because I mentioned to you that I don't have any sump systems whatsoever. So basically the tank itself becomes the sump. Because the rain chamber, the bio chamber is above the tank, that means we have to pump from the tank to there. So I've created a method of pre-filtration. So the water goes through the skimmer box instead of it being drilled traditionally at the bottom of the tank, that's where I have my pump. The pump pumps it back up and goes back to the, to the rain chamber. And that way it's just I'm using a piece of matten filter and that's my pre-filter. Now what you can't see is at the very back of the tank there's that black circle. That's actually a fitting. You can't see it because of my giant head. But that black fitting back there, that is actually the overflow and it's a passive overflow designed to handle the water load. So anytime the water level goes above that system, as it is right now because the water changer is running, the excess water will drain down passively down that thing, down to a drain pipe down there that runs right through into my floor drain. And because the water is running right now, there's a little bit of extra. That's the water change water going into my septic system. Uh, or I'm sorry, into my sump pit, and that's going to be just pumped out onto the yard. And because we're on a well system, that's just going to percolate through the ground and back end up back in my aquifer, where it'll be reused again. Now you can see the water level in that bio, or whatever you want to call it, pre-filter corner or skimmer box or whatever you want to call it. But you see how the water level in that has dropped down now? That'll be maintained at that level. Uh, and every day the water changer will kick on and the excess water will just go down the drain. So look at all fish. The half fish is so happy. There's one of the beautiful little buller eye, the gorgeous bear mernay, and a bunch of healthy, happy live bears. All thanking me for that beautiful water change. Now, one thing we did not touch on, which is very, very important is, okay, I got a bunch of different tank sizes. I like your idea, Biggs. I'm going to run to the home store. I'm going to buy one of those fittings and those valves and a bunch of pecs. I can do this. I can totally do this. 
Now the one thing that we haven't talked about is how you go about calibrating to do all these different sort of tank sizes. So what I do is, remember the rigid hose? The little rigid hose that came through the biofilter here and that's the thing? Okay, well that's what, quarter inch diameter rigid hose. And basically it's essentially the same diameter as airline hose except for its rigid wall. It's what we generally use for an RO system. You can buy it in big giant lengths. And it works great because it's rigid, it's easy to work with. And it handles pressure. Now, what I often did back in the day is I would open up a valve, full open, close all the other valves. I'm going to put a new tank online, and I want to know how big of a water change. Okay, well, I got a 100-gallon tank, and I want to do 5 gallons of water every day. Perfect. Okay? So what you want to do is if you're going to have your timer on, and your timer is going to be on for half hour a day, open your valve and put that hose in a five gallon pail and see how long it takes for that hose to fill that five gallon pail. If it takes 20 minutes to fill that five gallon pail, well then you gotta dial the valve back a little bit to be say three quarters or two thirds, right? It's 20 minutes out of 30 minutes. Valve's gonna be open for 30 minutes, so that's two thirds. So you want to have that valve at two-thirds, and then you've got that one dialed in. But it's not an exact science. Do you guys have markings on your tank and says every single water change, I want to take it to exactly this line? No, you don't. Most people don't. It's variable, and it's okay to do a little bit more. It's okay to do a little bit less. But you do have that flexibility of changing it up as you see fit. And each tank can be individually calibrated. You could also take, now you'd have to have two systems, but what I did at the old old place when I was dealing with RO water for breeding stuff like Siticum and some of those other oddball soft water species that really didn't tolerate the hardness all that well, what I would do for them is I would put them on the system with, um, with RO unit using the same sort of water changer system, but I would have a pressure pump in my RO tank. So unless instead of them getting pressure water from the water mains, they would be getting water from this pressure tank and the switch would call for water and then the pump would turn on and it would basically be exactly the same system, just a different water source. So this system for me has always been worked very, very well. It's very, very flexible. It meets all my needs. I can change things around as I see fit. Uh, I can bring tanks in and offline as quickly as I need to. So for me, this is the best of all worlds. But definitely, it's not the only method of doing things. This is just what works for bigs. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. And by all means, if you have any questions, anything, anytime, send me a comment, send me a message, like me on Facebook, and I'll put you. All, I'll, I'll migrate you to my Mad Aquarius page if you can't find it on Facebook. Send me some comments. Send me some likes. Tell your friends. Hit the subscribe button. Share the videos. Anything, guys. I love the support. It absolutely means the world to me. And if you're liking it, I'm going to keep doing it. Thanks, guys. Take care.